Alright, everybody, uh, so we're going to go into our uh, second uh, video on art here and talk about the commodification of art, which essentially, for those of you who don't know what commodification is, it's taking something and making it a commodity, something that can be sold. I guess saying commodity doesn't clear it up anymore. Uh, something that can be sold that has exchange value, um, and that's what we essentially do with art, especially uh, most of the art that we see is art that's been commodified. You can see this because uh, artists, right, and I'm going to talk mostly about music here, have a certain worth, have a certain value, right? Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift is worth X amount. Justin Bieber is worth X amount, right? And we can create this hierarchy of value of this artist is worth more than that, is worth more than that. Um, and that becomes problematic because, I mean, art really isn't something that you can quantify like that, right? The value of it isn't really quantifiable, yet we find a way to quantify it. We find a way to quantify everything, which becomes a problem. Taylor Swift's album sold more than this Beatles album or whatever. I mean, of course, like, that's, that's natural, right? There's more people around consuming music and we're able to, with marketing, right, marketing has improved, increased, and we're able to reach a wide, wider variety of people more because the business model, right, and, and capitalism is more and more and more and more and more and more and more. If Taylor Swift's next album doesn't sell more than her previous album, that album will be considered a failure or not so good, right, just on the business model. Um, and I'm not singling out Taylor Swift for any specific reason. I don't know anything about any of these pop stars. They could be excellent musicians. And this also isn't exclusive to pop. Uh, just pop exemplifies it. There's plenty of this going on with rock and every single genre, every type of art, uh, really. Um, you know, you have these rock bands who, I think I said that in the last video, that, that totally skipped the, the communal, right, the, the community art, and just went up to the tours and record deals and all that. And also there's this, the, the idea of hidden labor, which hidden labor is basically work put into something that we don't see. Um, I went to a concert, it was, it was a very good concert, I went to a concert recently and you know, I was watching all the stage hands up there doing the work and uh, the people working the venue and really if, if this artistic, right, if music as an art, this whole production is an artistic production then it's not possible without the stage hands, it's not possible without the manager, it's not possible without uh, the album's not possible without the recording engineers and, and the assistants and all that. Uh, and so are they considered artists? Are they technically artists, these stagehands? And it'd be easy to say, no, they're not artists because they're not the ones actually creating the art. But, I mean, in a sense, they are creating the art. They're creating the experience that we're having, this artistic performance that's being done. And then you could say, well, maybe they're more um, replaceable, right? They're more disposable. But then, A, we're making people disposable, which always leads to problems. And, B, the band is equally disposable. If they didn't have that band, they'd have a different band in, right? Because it's business. You keep it moving. And so really, uh, how, where is the line that we're going to draw? And you can look at other, uh, art, like, artistic performances, especially, like, local artists or whatever who do all these different performances, and you have a, you know, a group, a collective, a whatever, an artistic collective, and even, like, the smallest part, right, they're still an artist. They're part of the collective. They're part of doing this. Um, and so if you see, well, you know, the recording engineers, the stagehands, the manager, the people that sell the tickets as part of the collective, right, then why wouldn't they be artists? And, and why aren't they part of the collective if they're um, participating in this experience? Because without them, we wouldn't have these concerts. Uh, and so you have this hidden labor, which is really, like, pushed over because what we get is this package thing at the end, right? We get Beyonce. And Beyonce is perfect, right? Beyonce can sing and she can dance. Uh, but behind Beyonce is, is thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours of labor from all these people, right? Behind every artist we have that, and especially music, right? Music and pop. And, um, you know, I mean, even if you're going to get into visual arts, right, you have printers, you have editors for books, you have, you know, the printers there. Um, so... So there's no such thing as, like, this solo artist just doing their thing. It's all, uh, it's all collective. You need other people. And this also creates this illusion that somehow the individual, that you, right, if you believe in yourself, then you can be Beyonce or whatever. The truth of the matter is if you believe in yourself and you put in thousands of hours of work and have other people put in hundreds of thousands of hours of work, 
maybe you can, you know? And lastly, if we go back and try to think of this organic process of art outside of capitalism, um, much like our band that we had before, without this marketing, without the hidden labor, without all of that, no artist could really be world famous. I don't think they could, right? It may be possible, but I don't think that any artist would really become that famous, would become that well known, uh, that worth that much, because the idea of commodity is that we, we make, we give it a value, and so Taylor Swift wouldn't be worth X amount, and in fact she wouldn't be worth any money, right? No star, no painter, no actor uh, would be worth money because we wouldn't, there wouldn't be a price put on what they create. Um, as well as there would be no Taylor Swift, right? There would be no Beyonce. It would be the sort of collective, the group of people who are contributing to this performance that you're seeing. So I think, you know, it's easy to get caught up with this, with sales and numbers and uh, quantifying, quantifying art and value. Uh, but that's really something beyond quantification. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean to strip away, like, what? the accomplishments of these people who've worked really hard and, you know, made all this money. Uh, but I think, you know, it does pose a problem, and it poses a problem for the aspiring artist in that what they see isn't real. They're getting this um, nice package deal, they're getting value, and they have a value to themselves which isn't very much. I'm probably not worth anything at all, right? So then what does that do for what I have to say? What does that do for what I create? It can be very disheartening and, you know, paralyze people from, uh, from creating because of what they think it means and uh, how they see themselves in it. Uh, so that's it for this part. You know, something to think about. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.